Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm gonna show you how to make Cakey Cat and his cake from Gabby's Dollhouse. And if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe because it helps me out. All right, to begin our cakey, I am going to start with the cupcake. I chose these three colors because he's kind of got a blend going between the pink and the light blue. Um, they set up a little darker than maybe they should have, so maybe lighter versions of these would work, but I was still pretty darn happy with this. I am using gum paste because I want him to dry out and harden, be nice and strong. And as you see, I rolled out the pink, the light blue, and the purple, and I am stacking them together. Once I have them stacked together, I use my circle cutter there and I'm cutting through all three together in order to make just a big old blend. And this way, the way it cuts, it smushes them all together. So now they're stuck together and the sides are blended together. So it just kind of holds it together better, together, together. Now I'm trying to get more of the cupcake shape. So I'm pressing down on the bottom, trying to make it smaller than the top. I'm rolling it, as you see, in my hands. I'm using my fondant paddle, just whatever you can think of to get that quintessential cupcake shape. Just try it, do it. Um, once I'm happy with the shape of it, I'm using this little swizzle straw that I got from somewhere for stirring coffee. And I am pressing into the sides to try to make the cupcake um, wrinkles, you know, the little folds that cupcakes have. That's what I'm trying to do. And I was pretty happy with it. And then I realized that, oh, my wrinkles are going away. So I'm using my knife blade now to go over top of those wrinkles and just press them even deeper. So once you get that done, put it aside. We're gonna go ahead and start with the body. I've got a little white kind of ball there, you see? I cut the nip of it off and I'm using a circle cutter that I used to make the cupcake body to take a nip out and those are gonna be his little feet. I'm just gonna have him sitting because that would be way easier than trying to have that giant head and body stand on those little nubs. This piece that I'm rolling out is going to become his arms. I am trying to make kind of like a ball at the end of it, so I'm trying to roll it a little skinnier elsewhere to make it more like the little paws that he's got. Uh, so I'm going between my fingers, just, you know, trying to make it a little more arm and paw-like once I get a good little size, because he's got tiny little arms. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to try to match them up so that they're, you know, the same size and shape, because that would be better probably than just winging it. And I'm going to, like I said before, match them up, make sure they're the same size, try to make sure his little paw pads are the same size. If they're not, then I'm just gonna keep rolling and keep trimming until they are. Now, once I'm ready to attach them, I'm gonna use a piece of dried spaghetti. I'm going to use just kind of a pilot hole here. I'm gonna make a pilot hole so that I can press the arm in without making the spaghetti that's in the arm come any further in the arm, because in the, you know, earlier years of my time doing this, I would just shove that spaghetti stick right in and I've had it pop out the other end of whatever it was I was attaching and ruin it. So yes, pilot holes can be a wonderful thing. I'm gonna start on Cakey's giant head now. I have a big piece, as you see, and I'm trying to roll off about halfway up, yeah, about halfway up, uh, a section to make it more indented. So now you've kind of got like the big ball at the bottom the next layer, and then I'm separating the top layer into two little pieces for his little ears. So I've got kind of three levels going, and the idea, I guess, is that he looks like a big blob of, you know, icing on top of his cupcake head, or on top of his cupcake body. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm using my veining tool that I have there just because it's a nice, round, smooth thing as a little miniature rolling pin to try to keep it nice and smooth. I'm using that ball tool there to hollow out a couple eyes. His eyes are very small and very far apart. So be aware of that. They are kind of low. They sit more down by his cheeks than anything than up in his actual head. And I'm filling them in with some light blue, the same um, kind of a teal. No, it's not teal. We're just a bright blue that I used with the cupcake body. I'm adding now his pupils there, just a couple of black balls of gum paste again. And I'm kind of positioning it up high and toward the center. And be aware too that his pupils take up a lot of his eyes. So you're not gonna to see too much blue showing. I'm adding the little pads on his paws. I've got two light blues on the outside, the pink in the middle, and then a dark blue in the center toe pad paw thing. So yes, that, that explained it clearly. All right, now I'm going to add his mouth. 
I'm using this veining tool and I made three marks, kind of like the one line coming down and the two on the sides to make it kind of an arrow. Because his mouth is small, he's got a big, big, big head and he's got a small little mouth. So try to keep it nice and tight. I'm using the veining tool to just kind of press, press, press carefully because I don't want to accidentally make it too big. And I'm going, now I've kind of got an anchor sort of thing going. So now in the center, I'm just going to press, you can kind of see I'm trying to very carefully press down. Once I have a nice little mouth there, I put a piece of red gum paste in it. And now using the small end of my ball tool and the veining tool again, I am very gently coaxing this to where I want it to go. I am going nice and slow with this. Don't rush this because the red, especially on top of white gum paste, if you make a mistake, it's going to spread and smear and stain. And I'm adding a little ball of the light, light pink that I made. It's actually not the hot pink. It's very light pink. And then I had to clean up his cheek. Now the light pink little ball that I put in there is going to be his tongue. This little piece of the same colored light pink is going to be his nose. It's basically shaped like a jimmy if you're from South Jersey, Philly area. Or, you know, a sprinkle if you're from pretty much anywhere else in the country. I'm using some big ones up top. I've got the same blue as his cupcake body. I've got the pink of his nose and a gold one that I put there on top of his head for his hair, I guess. Two little white balls of gum paste for highlights. And now we're going to do his whiskers. So we're almost done. We're getting there already. His whiskers are just pieces of dried spaghetti that I wrapped in the colored gum paste that I wanted. So as you can see, there's the gold one going in. There's the pink one. All I did was wrap it around the pieces of dried spaghetti. I have pilot holes, by the way. I, I wasn't falling for it. And then I trim off the extra and just kind of pinch and roll as skinny and straight as I can until there you go. He's got his little cupcake whiskers. Now I'm using some light pink food coloring and water, mixing it together to make just a very light little kind of um, watercolor wash. And then I'm using my paintbrush there to very carefully just kind of paint it on his cheeks. So I've got it kind of on the outside of his eyes, very low on his cheeks, and I'm using a paper towel to blot it because it felt like it was maybe a little too dark. If you do use a paper towel to blot anything you paint, always blot from the outside toward the center or you're gonna smear it. So that's experience talking. Now for the final step, put Cakey's head on Cakey's body and you've got a cute little Cakey. All right, this is gonna be really quick and simple. Um, Cakey Cat loves to have its sprinkle parties and so I just made a little nice simple sprinkles cake to go with him. I have a six inch tier cake double stacked here. I just iced it in some white vanilla icing and now I'm going to just try to smooth out my sides as best I can because I'm not gonna cover this one with fondant. I'm just gonna use the icing. So like I said, I'm going to try to make this side smooth. I'm going to try to level off the top and make it as nice and flat as I can. This is not exactly my strong point, but you just do the best you can. So stick it in the fridge for a little bit so it can set, but don't let it set too much. Because now I'm going to add the sprinkles to it. I have some different size pink and blue and purple beads. And they're also kind of in different shades as well. Some are more of a hot, shiny color. Some are more muted but I'm just putting a handful of the smaller ones into my hand and then I'm just kind of smushing it up against the side of the cake. Try to go, if you decide to do this, try to go as heavy as you can on the very bottom edge and then kind of brush your hand upward as you press against it and that will help anyway in making it thin out as you go up the cake a little more. Anything extra, as you see, I'm just kind of tipping my cake plate and catching it to reuse. Nice little cheat code that you can do there. However, if your cake is not secure to the cake plate, you will lose your cake. So make sure you don't tip it too hard or you could be very sorry. So again, I'm just using some more of the sprinkles going around the cake. Just keep applying, keep applying. It's a little sloppy and messy looking, but you can fill it in in a moment or two with the bigger beads. So you'll see that in a second. So I'm going to go all the way around. Anything loose along the bottom, I'm just brushing. There's my son working on some paperwork right there because, you know, I do this at home in my own kitchen. So I have to, you know, work around some people sometimes. But anyway, now I'm moving on to the bigger balls, or beads, excuse me. I have some hot pink and hot blue. I'm just sticking them here and there, anywhere in the bottom where I felt like it looked kind of sloppy. Just stick one of those big beads and it fills in the gap nicely. Stick one hither and thither, going up the side of the cake, kind of spacing it out. It just gives it a nice look, a nice little effect. 
and then go back and I'm or excuse me I'm going back and taking a few of my medium sized beads and also putting them up the side of the cake a little bit now for the top I'm just taking a handful of the mix that I've got of the smaller sizes and just kind of putting them into the center as best I can I'm just pouring with the one hand and pressing down with the side of my other hand as best I can see I've got my whole little mix there pat it down gently I don't want to you know palm the cake too much There's some of my purple sprinkles those are real tiny now I'm going to add a couple of the big ones but not too many because I want to put cakey cat in his place before I get too much further so I'm just putting a few in there now I'm going to go get cakey here's cakey's little bottom half and I'm just kind of getting the position of it so I can have an idea of where he's going to sit on the cake because I'm going to add just a little bit more to it I have some of the extra icing that I made and I'm just making a bunch of little swirls not quite rosettes in the background just so he has a bit of a something going on behind him make a little more interesting looking I'm only doing a half circle though on the top because I don't want to block him he is super cute and adorable and colorful so I want him to show very clearly I'm putting some of the sprinkles the same colors I used before on each of those little coils I made I've got the purple going on first putting a couple of my blue and pink middle sized ones and then I'm going to finish it off with some of the big ones I'm going to put some of the extra big ones too around Kiki again because this was before like I had said why I wanted to wait I wanted to know where he was going to sit because I did have to reposition him a little bit so for me I have to put his head back on top and then I have a very simple very cute little sprinkle party cakey cat cake so I hope you found this video helpful again please like and subscribe because it really does help me out I've got a ton of other videos out there so please check those out and as always thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes